All right, I recorded Salter Santa this morning, so now we're gonna talk talk about Jolter Lily. So this servant, honestly, I think was more of a train wreck than even Salter Santa. And I did not have the highest opinion of Salter Santa, and I even ranked her lower. But that was more because the rider class for uh for welfares it, it's it's a lot like there was a huge gap in power and things just didn't work out well for uh santa Salter. lily had potential had potential shown it's just that it wasn't realized because of the time she came out her buff fixes some of it she definitely still needs at least one more buff, maybe even two. But she wasn't, I don't think, in as bad of a situation as Santa uh, Salter. So let's get started. Base attack 9.2k, HP almost 12k. Not bad, but again, this is year one. Attack is in the right place though. Star weight, star gen, normal answer numbers, it'd be charge 0.72 with pretty modern hit counts. Like she came out year, this is second Christmas, second, third Christmas, and she does look like a modern servant. These aren't super amazing, but they're, these are the average, average hit counts. Like when you're going through like year one and two, like you're expecting to see like wonky shit. This isn't even that bad. Yeah. First skill. This is the same thing that uh, Salter Santa has, but a little weaker. Salter Santa actually has this at 3,500. This is slightly lower, but for the buffs, I do want them to be different. I, when they decide to buff the Santa's gift skill, I do want them to be like different buffs. I don't want them to just copy paste the same buff onto other characters. So again, targeted heal, star gen out 30%. This, unless you are messing with like someone with really good quick cards or, or buster cards, like super high hit buster cards or like good to decent quick cards you're not going to notice a difference with this this is not going to let your arts cards gen a whole lot of stars this gives them a chance to gen stars but not it's not guaranteed for any kind of star gen buff you always want it to be like 100 percent. so yeah this is something but it needs to get buffed and honestly for and i said this in the salter video Salter Santa. This character needs the overcharge. This needs a targeted overcharge of at least two uh, on this skill specifically. Salter Santa, battery. This one definitely needs to be overcharged. And it comes, it has to do a lot more with the MP. Second skill, 20% battery, 50% debuff resistance. Again, this is why I held uh, Jolter Lily at a higher standard. This skill is way better than the other two skills Salter Santa had. He had instinct and a mana burst. This is a battery and debuff resistant. What, which one matters more? 15 stars or basically turn any kind of debuff into a coin flip. And in this game, if you have less than a coin flip, it's probably not happening. You can't re reasonably rely on anything to work. This pretty much, it's not debuff immunity, but most debuffs aren't even gonna land. 20% battery li with a wee little bit of farming. Don't, again, don't bank on it, but this had potential to be able to be used even in, if not farming, like multi-core setup. 
and also turning a 20 battery into a 30 is not the hardest thing it's adding a battery to a character that doesn't have one you have to balance it with the skills that are already there 20 percent on a five turn you can have a 30 percent battery on a five turn so this can get buffed pretty easily third skill it's still better than what Salter Santa has. A mana burst that is a higher level than most other mana bursts tied to an envelope. Now, this still stuff sucks. Don't get me wrong. Don't get it twisted. Having invul tie like survivability tied to a car bus all on a one turn is not a good thing. It's not fun. You don't like it like this. But at the same time, it's better than it being just a mana burst. It's better than it just being a mana burst because you can use it when you need it. Whether you need it for damage, whether you need it for survivability, at least she has damage and survivability. Because Zelter Santa has a heal. That's her survivability, a heal. And yeah, she does a shit ton of damage to herself. Don't, don't get it. Let's, let's be 100%. This is way more damage than she probably needs to take. But at least it's just damage. She has a heal herself. She can heal that up. Passive skills, 21% debuff resistance, and that's it. Anti-Avenger because her original like she doesn't like looking at regular jolter because jolter lily is somehow closer to actual john than jo than jolter like try wrapping your head around that the altar is closer to the, the altar lily is closer to the original than the actual altar or closer to the original than the altar like ugh. It, like it gets so nonsensical the fucking name is nonsensical John the Ark, Alter, Santa, Lily. This shit's nonsensical. They make the they make a joke out of it throughout everything. All right. Original version, debuff resistance ten percent, party attack, and healing received. These are decent buffs, but they were all originally one turn. The issue with all of this shit is that you can't you couldn't use skills with them debuff resistance of one turn and the healing received you literally had to either put command like face cards with command codes or NPs that had these effects that had something that needed a debuff or heal in order to ever get anything from this MP that is so counterintuitive for what an MP like this is supposed to be. It's supposed to set up for future turns, but you couldn't do that. You set up for later in the turn. And these were low values. Like I would get it if it was like 100% healing received for this turn, 50% attack for this turn, 50% debuff resistance for this turn. But it wasn't, it was 10%, 10% attack. That's almost nothing. You barely will ever notice a difference in damage from just 10%. And you had to do it on the MP pretty much or face cards. You never, you would notice the difference. The buff didn't do anything else besides make all these effects three turns and obviously increase the damage, but that's all it needed. Especially these two that you can carry over so if uh, Jolter Lily is MPing back to back, you like with some overcharge, you can get a decent attack buff that leads to a single target nuking in the final wave or doing Jolter Lily single target and maybe Jolter Lily again. I don't know. It depends on the node. But being able now she has actual ramp up. It's not good ramp up. Like, trust me, this is this number here it tells me they're gonna give her like an overcharge buff because like 
again, like I said, 10% isn't much. This to me is supposed to be used in conjunction with other MPs for overcharge or someone giving an overcharge buff. But yeah, missed opportunity. Like I feel they should have upped the scaling uh, if they weren't gonna buff her and give her overcharge. Again, maybe they do that in the future. I wouldn't expect it anywhere in the next couple months though. But we have seen a unit get two buffs in the time span of four months, and that's Ozymandias. And Ozymandias went from okay to almost like almost uncontested by other single target riders. So it could happen. It's just not likely it's gonna happen. Skills to level. He needs a lot of gold on the appends, like an uncomfortable amount of gold mats on the append. And these, it's not the worst. It's just, this is a lot of stuff you'd already need, but it's all like year one stuff. So don't worry too, too much. Bond CE. Healing received by 30% while she's on the field. It, it's not the best thing, especially because she doesn't do that much healing. She sets up for other people to do healing. Now, if you are using her with Merlin, this has a lot more, val more value. Like her ramp up of her MP makes way more sense if she's supposed to be used with Merlin. Because then you actually could take advantage of a lot of this stuff. But it, it, it comes with like, are you going to use Merlin character? Probably not. Not unless she gets like overcharged stuff. And then you can do like invincible comp. But yeah. This unit, you are not going to take her farming for most places. You're going to need a very specific reason to bring this servant out. And I think it will have to be another buff. Delter Santa has immediate use. It's just super niche and like non-standard. This servant has the potential to be used in normal farming. They kind of just need to buff that second skill and make it a 30 and then she could do three turning. She would have ramp up. It's just not going to be the higher damage. So... You're going to have the coins to be able to get her up. Just get the rare prism. If you don't use her, you don't use her. But it's nice that they finally gave out uh, these old units. Most people probably have very negative feelings to this servant because he ruined their login streak. Um, but this servant is featured in so many events in the future. And like, this is the first time people have gone to use her in a very long time. So just take the free servant, take the free uh, mana prisms, uh, or not mana prisms, uh, pure prisms, rare prisms, uh, ascension stuff, all that stuff. Just take it for free. Uh, and yeah, not much more else to say. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed, drop a like or sub. Hope to see you in the next one. Peace.